This is a day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And welcome to worship with Prince of Peace Lutheran Church. You've just heard Kendra singing, Kendra Weezer, uh, accompanied by Chris Gustafson on the piano. And if you're keeping score, this is the seventh and last weekend of the Easter season. And this week, the focus of our storytelling begins to change from the resurrection that God and Jesus pulled off and we begin to meet the Holy Spirit as she gets involved in the story, beginning with Jesus' disciples today. The disciples have a dilemma. What do you do when you don't know what to do? How do you lead if you don't know where you're going? So the disciples and the Spirit will learn from them today. The hymn you just heard is 400 years old, um, but Given the eclecticness of our music director, the next two hymns we'll hear are barely 40 years old. And so we look forward to this whole worship service, songs, prayers, words. Are you ready? Our monthly theme is accompanying, walking with others. As themes go, as our spiritual practices go, we've done 10 months of this. Probably our most po popular spiritual practice was when we practice gratitude. And that makes sense. Going through a pandemic, there is nothing that combats the sense of overwhelm more than practicing gratitude. But this, the practice we seem to stumble on, the one we had the most trouble with, and it could be just a matter of timing, or, or we called it reconciliation. Or forgiveness but it was basically we defined that as um, bringing people into relationship across differences and we chose that practice during the election season so we struggled with it a bit our new youth director Beth Ganya is scheduling small groups of graduating seniors for mini baccalaureate sessions so the church can accompany these young people, speak a word of blessing to them and their parents as they graduate at the end of the month. And if you look at our Facebook page, I just love watching the pictures go by on that page and noticing that, okay, just recently we planted a playground and we planted a garden. I find that very hopeful as we are leaving this uh, phase of pandemic. Also hopeful is our planned return to in-person worship on June 6th. But we know that coming back into this room, which is so holy to so many, might feel overwhelming. So if you'd like to come in for a time of poetry and prayers and piano um, on Pentecost Sunday, May 23rd, there'll be a time where you can come in and listen to music and some 
take part in some reflections. Another time we will gather is on Memorial Day Monday at, at our church cemetery for an outdoor event to observe Memorial Day. And in our prayers this week, we have several in our congregation who are facing surgery in the near future, so we remember them in our prayers. Uh, Ron Hammond, who is in hospice care and with his cancer. And then some people who are actively treating their cancers, Jan Berg, Carol Jones, Lee Johnson, and Pastor Bard Seth. And it is our joy this weekend to celebrate another baptism. This one is Axel McGee. His dad and mom are Travis and Nikki Harper McGee. And so we invite you to say prayers of gratitude with them. They've, enjoy, they've invited you to join them in their joy. So, as we get ready to worship and all this news swirling about, this is a day the Lord has made. Take a deep breath in, let it out, and let's just still ourselves as we prepare our hearts, our minds, to receive God's word as it comes to us through the music, through the words, and through the prayers. Amen. So much of what happens at worship is kind of a gift that we receive. So if you would like to receive a gift, let whoever you're worshiping with trace a cross on your forehead or trace a cross over your brow and, as, and give that gift of remembrance of our baptism to each other as we begin our worship this day in the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Holy One, open us to the possibility that we are being chosen to be new disciples with new ministries. In Jesus' risen name, amen. today comes from the book of the Acts of the Apostles, the first chapter. May God bless our hearing of God's holy word. In those days, Peter stood among the believers. Together, the crowd numbered about 120 persons. And he said, friends, the scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit through David foretold concerning Judas, who became a guide for those who arrested Jesus. For he was numbered among us and was allotted his share in this ministry. So one of the men who had accompanied us during all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John until the day when he was taken up from us, one of these must become a witness with us to his resurrection. So they proposed two, Joseph, called Barsabbas, who was also known as Justice, and Matthias. And then they prayed, and they said, Lord, you know everyone's heart. Show us which one of these two you have chosen to take the place in this ministry and apostleship from which Judas turned aside to go to his own place. And they cast lots for them, and the lot fell on Matthias, and he was added to the eleven apostles. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. God's beloved people, at that moment, I remember distinctly thinking, so this is what it's like to die. I was busy passing out while a lot of people, hospital personnel, were in my ICU room discussing my 
falling vital signs after my heart surgery. Later, the next week, a member of my surgical team confided to me that in that discussion, she was getting very nervous until there was a decision made. They were going to open up my chest and go back in again. She said, oh, that calmed me down a lot because once we have to do a procedure, we know how to do procedures. And I remember thinking to myself, you have a very strange job. A less dramatic example is when sometimes we don't know what to do when we're face to face with mystery or some great unknown, some, some vast thing greater than ourselves when it's coming up and the due date gets close. So many of the times what we do is we clean, we tidy, we organize. A classic example when we're getting, expecting a baby, we nest. Turning to details and to procedures and duties gives us comfort. Yeah, we read in the book of the Acts of the Apostles today. In the book of Acts is this back and forth between wild Holy Spirit encounters of pulling people out of their comfort zones to do things they've never done before in ways they've never done them. Things that might involve fire and strange languages and prophecy and miracles and public speaking and touching strangers. And with all of that, on the other side, the book of Acts is all about tidying up, figuring out logistics and details, creating structure and order and assigning certain people KP duty. But we tend to love this little story in chapter 1 because of all that. Before anything else starts to happen, Jesus' friends must replace Judas to round out their gang of 12. Jesus didn't tell them to replace Judas. They came up with that all on their own. But what else should they do? They've just seen the dead and risen Jesus float off into heaven right before them. And he's telling them to hang, hang out here because the, you're going to have a baptism of the Holy Spirit. They're in the midst of a massive shift of identity from followers to sent ones. And so they organize. Right now they are in the in-between, the not yet. We call it a liminal space. This pocket of space between something is so important that God likes to use it a lot. The Israelites in the wilderness, Jesus in the wilderness, and for that matter, Abraham, Jacob, Joseph, Ruth, Esther, all had these in-between liminal times in their lives. Think about Moses and his stint as a shepherd, or the Apostle Paul, who was knocked down, blinded, and at the mercy of those he came to kill while he waited to find out what God would do next. This liminal space, that being on the threshold of change becomes a kind of waiting like Advent before Christmas or Lent before Easter or being engaged or in hospice or unemployed or coming out of a pandemic adjusting to some new reality that's coming but you haven't quite figured out what it's going to look like or mean or how you're going to live into it Yet these times are God's rich soil in us, where something dies and something new gets born. When most of what you knew before gets taken away, and what is coming hasn't come yet. And so you're stuck in this awkward middle, trying to figure out how to stay still and to move forward at the same time. Only now, there's no rabbi to follow. There's no teacher to listen to. Nobody's telling them how this is supposed to go, what they're supposed to believe, what they're supposed to do. Well, they're witnesses. They remember that, and they remind each other. But beyond that, they've got no idea about what's next. So they tidy. They fix a problem. We've got to fill the empty seat. But since Jesus has picked all the rest of them, how would they know how to pick Judas's successor? 
Well, they do it in a really unique way. They don't interview. They don't vote. They don't argue for their favorite candidate. I mean, there's a complete lack of Robert's rules of order in the whole process. Instead, they figured out a way to let God choose. They chose the 12th apostle by drawing straws. There's a lot of ways to listen for God. But right here at the beginning, in this in-between time, before the Holy Spirit has come, but after Jesus has died and risen and left them, these people sought as faithfully as they knew how, how to honor the fact that God's voice speaks and God's hand acts. Humanity is in a liminal state right now where life leaks in from the future and hope is real but sort of hidden. And in this in-between time, we still say God's hand acts, God's voice speaks. So how do we listen? Well, this month, we're listening to those whom we accompany, people that we've set aside our time in order to walk with them in their grief, in their loss, in their loneliness. Last month, we listened to our reflections of what just happened in our lives. Last fall, we let gratitude and generosity guide us. We've listened to God on the paths of simplicity and forgiveness back in the election season and prayer. And we've trusted stories, both ours and God's, to give us direction. We've opened ourselves to the Holy Spirit through hospitality and discernment. And all of these spiritual practices are ways of listening for God. Sometimes I think we, we tell ourselves that we should have all of this down or that church should go a certain way and we're messing things up if it doesn't look exactly that way for us. But remember these first witnesses? They began in joy, still doubting and still disbelieving. And they let themselves be in the awkwardness and the newness. And here's what they did. They told each other stories of seeing Jesus. They sat in the discomfort of, an, of a liminal time, embracing its mysterious promptings and newness. And they trusted God to lead, even more than they trusted themselves. You see, we're not called to do faith perfectly. But we are supposed to live right where we are, in whatever in-betweens we may find ourselves seeking God's direction and listening and learning and trying things for the first time and falling down and trying again. Because it's in the middle between the life-changing encounters that draw us out of ourselves and the everyday organizing tasks that ground us that together we get to practice what trusting God looks like. Amen.
as we live in a little bit of uncomfortableness in a liminal time, we share the peace of the Lord with each other, the peace of God that lives inside of us. So the peace of the Lord be with you all and also with you. We want to thank you for your generous gifts this year. Uh, right now, our envelope giving is keeping up with our expenses, and this next month, we will retire our line of credit debt from our Pelly expansion. And so there's much good news brought about by your generosity. And our worship service continues with the prayer of the church. As your church gathers... Separate, separate yet together. Hear our prayers for everyone, Lord. Gracious God, thank you for this time when we can spend it together in prayer. Guide our actions this day. And no matter what happens, remind us that we belong to you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Faithful Savior, India is running out of oxygen and families in Palestine and Israel are sleeping together in the same beds so that either they will, families will all live or all die as bombs drop on their neighbors. Plant your word in the hearts of nations' leaders and give them your spirit so that the peoples of the world can live in peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Caring healer, be present to those who are sick or suffering or fighting overwhelm. Provide for those needing homes or medical care and point all of us toward life, even amidst our worry, pains, or fears. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gentle Redeemer, help us to embrace in between times, trusting your presence within them. Teach us to see and hear and feel and to know you when we're not in control and when we cannot know for certain what the future holds. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the hope of new life in the risen spirit of Jesus, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy through Jesus Christ who teaches us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hear the words of the Lord and know that you are holy and honored and precious and loved. The blessings of Almighty God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit guard your coming in and your going out. Amen. Go in peace this week. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. flowing